every time I do a video on a clipboard manager, someone tells me about another one that I should try out. And today we're looking at one called Copy Q. And this one has the advantage that none of the others seem to do. And that is that they can store images of arbitrary sizes. So I think, yeah, there's my copy on my second screen. If we go over to my clipboard, as we will see, the image is in here. I don't know why none of the others support images of arbitrary sizes, but this one does. So that is a massive improvement for me. Now, by default, when you're in this GUI side, you can only move around with your arrow keys. But if you go into your uh, file and then preferences, you can enable via style navigation, which I would recommend doing. So this GUI interface, you really only have to use when you're trying to select something earlier in your history. Anything else for the most part can be done from the CLI tool. So with that vice style navigation enabled, you can move up and down with J and K. You can press Control J to actually move something down, Control K to move something up, and you can delete something by pressing X. That's pretty much all you're going to want to do from the GUI side. By default, it does add an icon into your system tray being this one up here. But if you want to disable that, that can be done in the preferences. And then if you want to open up the GUI, what you can do is just run copy, Q, toggle. And that will then open up the GUI whenever you run that. Now, normally when you take your mouse off of this window, it will automatically close. However, I have disabled that functionality for the sake of the video, just because it could be a little bit annoying while I'm trying to record. But just keep in mind that if it just suddenly closes and you're not really sure why, it's because you took your focus off of the window. Now you can search in this window by just starting to type. So if I say search for, I don't know, the you'll see everything that has that in it. But you don't actually just have to search from this window. So if instead of having the entire GUI, you'd much rather have a smaller one, what you can do is run copy Q menu, and that will open up a little context menu wherever your cursor currently is located. So in here, if you press slash, that will then let you start search. So let's search for that again. And that brings up all the same stuff. Now, obviously being a context menu, you don't have to use your keyboard. You can just use your mouse. And yeah, it worked basically as you'd expect the context menu to do. So you can bring up your preferences just from this window. You can show and hide the icon and you can disable the clipboard store. Most of the stuff that you're probably going to want to see in this context menu. Now it is a little bit sad. There isn't an easy way to integrate this into something like D menu, but I can kind of accept it with the GUI just working about as well as D menu does anyway. While we have the GUI open, one thing you can do in here that isn't really that easy to do from the CLI tool is going and tagging elements in this list. So a tag doesn't stop you from say deleting it or anything like that. Basically what it's going to do is let you differentiate it from the rest of the things in the list. So by default, the one tag you have is tag as important. And if you want to go add new tag, what you can do is go into your preferences and go into the item section and go to tags. And then you can add just any sort of tag you want in here. So let's say we'll call it work and we'll make this one red. Okay. So if we go to apply, that should add the tag to our list. And as we can see, that has gone and updated the list on the side. Now, without having the uh, names for things, it's a little bit annoying to spot things. But there we go. The tag as work is down the bottom here. Now, one thing I did notice is that if you go and delete old tags, it doesn't actually take them out of the list here. So new tag was one of the tags I made to actually go and test stuff. And new tag is still in the list, even though it wasn't in the list on the actual preferences. Now, if you want to add a tag that isn't in that list, you have to go find the add a tag button. So that's this one right here. And then you can just go add an arbitrary tag. So you can use one of the ones in the list here, but you could also say just this is some garbled text and that will add that tag in as well. From the CLI tool, we can make a new element and also add a new tag to it by running this command right here. So copy Q right. And what this is going to do is in text slash plane. So that is a mime type. It will then create this text item with tag. So that's just going to actually add that into our clipboard list here. And then this second part is going to be application slash x dash copy q dash tags. Now this is the mime type for a copy q tag. So in this case, the tag for it is going to be some tag text. And if we run that, as we can see, we've added that into our clipboard. So it's not an easy add a tag command or anything like that. You always have to do it through the right command, which is a little bit annoying, but Generally, tags don't really matter anyway. If you're going to be using tags, you're going to want to do them from the GUI in the first place. 
However, if what you're going for is stopping it from being deleted, the way you do that is actually by going and pinning that message. So that can be done by clicking the little pin icon up here. And then if we try to delete that, so this button down here, we must unpin it first. So if you want to make sure it stays inside of your clipboard, that's how you'd go about doing that. But a better way to split things up is by using a separate tab. Now, by default, this main tab that your clipboard copies to is just called clipboard. But if we go up to the tab section and press new tab, let's call this one new tab. As we can see, now we have a separate tab. You can also go and create a tab from the terminal by doing copy Q uh, tab, then give it a name. So let's just call it test and then add and that adds a new tab as well. So let's just get rid of this one and go back to our new tab. Now, because you can actually create these tabs that don't interact with your clipboard, this is also sort of a notes application as well. Now, I wouldn't use it for anything too important, but if there's things you just wanna jot down, maybe this could be a useful tool for that. So if you wanna go add a new note to this tab, what you do is click on this little pencil icon down here and that will open up your editor. So let's say this is a note and save that. And as we can see, we have that text in here now. And you can also go add a note to that tab with the same command we saw before, but this time actually pass in an argument to the add command. This is a note and put this on the correct tab. So we called it new tab. And as we will see, now we have that extra note in this tab. You can rename a tab from the GUI or you can do it from the CLI tool by doing copy Q rename tab as one word and then pass in the name of the current tab so in this case new tab and then pass in a new name for it and we'll just call it name and as we'll see the name of that has now changed and you can also go and remove a tab by doing copy q remove tab and then whatever the name of the tab is so in this case it is now name and there we go now the tab is gone I wouldn't recommend ever deleting the main clipboard tab because that's sort of the main functionality of this application we can edit notes from the GUI or the CLI tool. So that can be done with copy, Q, edit, and then the row number for the note you want to edit. So let's say we want to edit number 10. So we just pass in 10 and that will bring it up in our editor. So let's say we want to add, this is some extra lines. Cool. And if we go and save that, it will then go and make that change over here. And as we can see, it also moves it to the top of our clipboard history. If we want to insert text into our main clipboard tab, that can obviously be done with the tab and add commands we saw earlier, but it can also be done with the copy Q insert command as well. And with this one, we can pass a row number into it. So let's say we want to insert text into row zero. Now this doesn't actually go and modify row zero. What it's going to do is just go and put this text into that row and then shift everything else around it. So in this case, we're going to insert the text hello world. And now that's going to be in row zero. And you can also remove text by doing the remove command. So copy, Q, remove, and then passing in a row number. If you don't pass a row number into it, it's just going to remove whatever's on the top. So in this case, let's say we want to remove uh, number two here. And as we can see, that's no longer in our history. And you can cycle through the copy queue history by doing copy queue next and copy queue previous. Now it's not prev, make sure you do previous instead. Prev will not work. One thing that's missing from most of these clipboard history managers is an easy way to actually paste from the clipboard. So you could always go and actually select something in the GUI here and then select it and then paste it over here. But that's one more step than you should probably need to do. So I've noticed that if you select something with the cursor keys, this doesn't work. But if you go and select something with copy queue next and previous, so let's say we select this one here and then run copy queue paste. What that's going to do is try to paste whatever text you've got selected over here inside of your current window. Now, this really depends on the application you're trying to paste into. My terminal seems to work. It may not work perfectly in Vim. It may not work perfectly in some random terminal applications out there. But from what I've seen, it seems to be fairly consistent. Rather than configuring everything from the GUI interface, you can go and configure stuff from the CLI interface as well by doing copy Q config and that will list out all of your config options telling you what their names are. If you do copy Q config and then the thing you want to configure. So let's say, I don't know, tray underscore tab. As we can see, that doesn't have a value. So let's pick something else. Let's go with the Vi option here. As you can see, that one is set to true. And then if we pass a value into this, we can go and set the value. So let's go and set that one to false. And if we go over to our preferences over here, it should say that one is now set to false and it does seem to do that. 
One thing that is really useful, which I won't be digging into today, but I recommend exploring if you do actually want to get serious with this application is the scripting API. So if you go over to the scripting API documentation, basically this tells you every single function that you can call that is basically being exposed by the application. So if you want to do things like What's something cool you can do in here? You can check the clipboard format. You can check the selections of things. Basically, you can actually use this for the base of a much larger application if that's something that you want to do. Personally, I'm happy with the way it works right now, but if there are some things that you can't do with that CLI tool, then maybe you could get it done through this scripting API. But back to the CLI tool, if you ever need to temporarily disable the clipboard functionality, you can always just run copy Q disable, and then that will then go and disable that. So no matter what we do in here, that's not going to copy anything. If we then run copy Q enable, then it should be working again. So copy that. And as we can see, now it's working again. So this could be useful if you're trying to copy, say, a password or something like that, and you don't want it saved in your clipboard history. But you can also go and configure SHA-1 encryption as well. So if you go into the preferences, go down to items, then there's this section on encryption here. So if you do want to save passwords in here, I would recommend going through this method just to make sure that they will be safe. One thing I didn't mention earlier is if you want to see the labels for the buttons on the side here, you can go into your preferences go to the layout and then click on the hide toolbar labels button. Now, this is actually the default setup here. So by default, the labels are hidden, but it's very difficult to work out what the buttons are actually used for. So I'd recommend enabling that if you do want to use the GUI fairly frequently. Now, I didn't show everything you can do with the CLI, so I would recommend going and looking at the man pages for that because there's quite a few things you can do. Most of the things you can do with the GUI interface can be done from the interface as well. So trying to go through all of that would take a pretty long time. So... I would recommend doing your own experimentation with this, seeing if it fits into your workflow. Personally, I think it's a pretty useful tool. I'm not sure if it's going to fit into what I'm trying to do. I did like the other choices where I can use D menu instead, but having the ability to save images is a really nice addition. So maybe I'll try this out for a bit longer and see if it fits into my workflow, at least until someone in the comment section for this video tells me about another clipboard manager I can use. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about today. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinian, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Monster, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Peter, D. Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikkel, Nate, Dog, Nefer, Tees and Zilver. If you want to go and support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, sell, leave, pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, Bitch and Bitshoot if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.